Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of AgriLife Today. I'm Blair Fannin. And I'm Kathleen Phillips. This week we'll hear about the outlook for the 2014 cattle market as well as several agricultural commodities. We'll also learn about a new peach variety available for home gardens across Texas and a cowpea study that focuses on drought and heat tolerance. All this and more as we take a look at Texas agriculture and Texas A&M AgriLife across the state. Texas A&M AgriLife Extension economists recently provided 2014 projections for major commodities produced in Texas, with many pointing to past drought conditions as a key factor in making or breaking a crop. The Plains region of Texas and part of South Texas were dealt a severe blow in 2013 with drought conditions. However, AgriLife Extension economists say if positive weather patterns develop and lead to periods of timely rainfall, there's reason for optimism for the 2014 crop year. At the recent Central Texas Cow-Calf Clinic in Milano, Dr. David Anderson gave an outlook for 2014 beef cattle prices. Anderson said for beef cattle prices to continue their record run in 2014, the U.S. corn crop will have to produce record yields. That aside, the 2014 beef cattle market outlook is poised for another historic run as lack of supply will continue to fetch strong bids on calves. Anderson said fewer cows and calves will lead to less beef production over the next couple of years. Timely rains across much of the state have the wheat crop looking much better than last year at this time, but for some areas, drought and cold temperatures may have combined to do some damage, according to Dr. Clark Neely, AgriLife Extension Small Grain Specialist in College Station. He said substantial rains came during the fall starting in September for much of the state, in fact, wet conditions kept some acres from being planted in the blacklands, something not seen in recent history. Soils have been fully recharged for most of East Texas, and enough moisture has fallen to give consistent stands west of San Angelo and north of Abilene and Vernon, according to Neely. Fourteen new varieties of peaches and nectarines are available now at more than 30 garden centers throughout the state, according to Dr. David Byrne, AgriLife Research Peach Breeder in College Station. They were developed to grow in places where winters are mild. That's because winter chill requirements uh, determine whether a tree is able to grow and produce fruit. Ordinarily, trees that have not had enough chilling hours starting in October or November will make less fruit or poor quality fruit. Chilling hours measure the number of hours that the temperature is less than 45 degrees. The new trees require much fewer chilling hours, so they should be able to grow even in South Texas. Cow peas, also known as black-eyed peas, are an important food grown in more than 80 countries. AgriLife research scientists are mapping the genes that control drought and heat tolerance in cow pea varieties, according to Dr. Mei Ping Zhang, AgriLife research scientist in College Station. Under a $500,000 grant from the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, Zhang and others are using recently developed DNA sequencing technology in the research, she said. Cowpeas were chosen for the study because they are a high protein grain and a high nitrogen fixing legume that can be intercropped with corn, cotton, and other crops. With more than 5,200 acres on its campus, some might think Texas A&M University's roots in agriculture would have produced a showy public garden by now. Well, almost. The Texas A&M Gardens and Greenway project is just beginning, but officials say the effort will be worth the decades it took to evolve. Certainly the idea of having a public garden, botanic garden, arboretum has been around Texas A&M University for, gosh, almost 20 years, I would think. It's about two years ago, you know, we opened the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences uh, complex. Uh, three buildings now complete and it creates sort of a backyard for us. This is my job is to move this project forward and it's called the Texas A&M Gardens and Greenway. So we brought some people together, some faculty, staff, students to dream. You know, if we're going to have a public space, a green space, uh, what do we want in it? We've boiled it down to our core functions and such, uh, but number one, of course, is teaching. You know, it has to be that outdoor laboratory, that outdoor teaching facility uh, in the garden, uh, in the green space, in a native prairie, uh, in the uh, White, uh, White Creek, uh, into a riparian area. Welsh said a team of faculty, staff, and students dreamed up what to do with the green space that was officially allocated in the university's master plan. 
That's a look at agriculture across the state of Texas and Texas A&M AgriLife. For these stories and more, please visit our website at today.agrilife.org.